Today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Drobo, a family of safe, expandable, yet simple to use storage arrays. Drobos are designed to protect your important data forever. This holiday season, give someone a Drobo to keep all their files and memories safe forever. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. This is a talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is panel number three in our holiday gift guide series. This is always a popular series, and, and I guess because it brings a lot of the folks that we talk to all year together to share some some product picks and, and a bunch of laughs, and so it, it just feels like an ongoing holiday party. That's why we do multiple of them, including the fact that there are a lot of cool stuff out there. Um, this time, our third panelist did not show, so we will have them back for another show. But there's the show must go on, so let's uh, find out who is here this, with us this time. Um, first up, Ms. Jean McDonald. Jean, it's, it's great to see you. I can't get you on the show for anything other than gift picks. It's terrible. Um, that's, well, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to come up with something wild and crazy and, and say, okay, Chuck, let's go with this. Um, uh, actually, yeah, now that you say it, I'm like, oh, I have some ideas, though. You, you, um, uh, you've got my thinking going. But okay. gift picks, for sure. Every, I, I believe this is like my fourth or fifth year doing this. And when I got the invitation, I was like, yeah, I, I can't miss this. This is the one thing I absolutely show up on once a year. And yeah. I, um, but I do, I miss hanging out with you. I think being um, the, the thing that I'm most busy with these days is App Camp for Girls, which is a nonprofit uh, organization that I started with some awesome volunteers about four years ago. And that is a, a program that shows girls in middle school, so 13, 14 years old, how to make iPhone apps and hopefully get them excited about joining the tech community and becoming developers or designers or something involved with software. Because as you know, our numbers, uh, the, the, the female contingent at, at your average tech conference is rather t small. So uh, that's my main, um, I think, where people know me from. Um, I'm happy to be back. Well, it's, it's so good to have you. And, and we'll have to talk afterwards about getting you on more often. If, if you have ideas, I'd love to hear them. But it's good to have you back. And yeah, if, it would not be one of the holidays or a, a series of holiday shows without you. So good to have you. Joining Jean and me is Mr. Bart Bouchatz. Bart, welcome. It's great to have you as well. Hey, delighted to be back. I think the last time you had me on was gifts as well. I, yeah, but I, I think somewhere... That's a time zone thing, not an it, ideas thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it, we struggle with the time zone thing, but you've had uh, you, you've had no sense at all because you've invited me over to some of your podcasts, and, and I always enjoy it. It's That's a lot true. of fun. Well, I love having you on because, you know, it's fun to talk. Yeah. You always have interesting things to say. So, well, I've got you fooled. Um, <laughs> what, tell, tell folks about your shows and what else you do. Sure. So I do two monthly podcasts, uh, one uh, in the middle of the month-ish called Let's Talk Photography, where we talk about the art and craft of photography. My sort of rule, with the exception of the gift show we recorded last month, my rule is sort of no tech. So it's not about which camera is best. It's about why would I want a macro lens and what could I do with it, not which macro lens is best, if, if that sort of makes sense. So it's it's about the hows and the whys and the whats in a generic sense and not not about which cool new toy came out. And then uh, at the end of every month, or really at the start of the month following, we record a show called Let's Talk Apple, where we, we try to sort of see the forest for the trees, and we look at the, the big picture in Apple News for the month that has just gone. Um, so we try to pick four or five stories and talk through them. And it can be quite interesting, actually, because a lot of stories don't happen in one single piece. They, they evolve. And if you, if you only look at them once a month, they're actually much more interesting to talk about than if you're trying to do it every day as it happens. 
Well, it's always great to have you here. And I, I always, as I said before, I always enjoy being on the shows. And so this time, though, we get to talk about some of our favorite stuff, um, as we've had two panels so far. So there are a number of things that are off the table for picks. And folks, if this is your first uh, Mac Jury gift guide, you will know, or I should tell you, I guess, that uh, we try not to duplicate picks. So we distribute a list of everything that has been picked by previous juries that forces uh, our, our current panelists to come up with something new and gives you more ideas. So with that, let's do it. Um, Jean, how about if we start with you? What do you have for the first round? <clears throat> well, I have a little uh, item. It's not really a device that changed my life this year. It's called, uh, it's a, a stand for the Apple Watch. So this is it with my Apple Watch on it. And um, I'm showing, if you're listening, you can't see it, but it's it fits in the palm of my hand. It's made out of this like very nice texturized, rubberized um, plastic that um, holds the Apple Watch charger. So you can see that. And then the, the cord fits in the back. And it sits on my nightstand so I can put the watch on it for nightstand mode, which won't show up right now because I'm not plugged in. Um, and this little thing, the, the, I've not heard of the manufacturer uh, before, but it's, it's called Eligo or Eligo. Um, and it's made out of what, scratch free silicon, they say, and it was $9. Okay. So it was super inexpensive. And I was looking for a watch stand because I wanted to start using the nightstand mode on my Apple watch for, um, uh, for sleep, you know, better sleep, uh, practices. Uh, one of my terrible habits up until now was to have my iPhone on my nightstand and my rationalization was, well, it's my alarm clock too. So I need it there. And then I started looking around at alarm clocks because I, what would usually happen, I, I'm, uh, when I usually wake up sometime in the middle of the night. And if I wake up and I can't get back to sleep, I'll start rationalizing. Well, I'm already awake. I'm going to look at a few <laughs> things on my iPhone to sort of help me, like distract me to make me go back to sleep. And as you know, like an hour later, um, hopefully an hour later, you fall back to sleep, you know, uh, and, uh, in the worst case scenario, something major happens at what is four o'clock in the morning here on the Pacific coast. And then I can't go back to sleep because I, I'm, I get sucked into the story or whatever. So uh, I wanted to get the phone off of my nightstand and into another room. And I thought about buying an alarm clock, but I was afraid of the, whether it would make noise. I wouldn't like the ring of it. Um, it just, Finally, it's, all, uh, it's also not a subtle way to wake up something hammering bells like it's yes, it's pretty so <laughs> that's true. I know like alarm clocks are in cartoons for a reason, you know, they, they <laughs> ring and they like jump around and <laughs> they're kind of iconic for being really annoying things. So uh, and then I realized, well, there is this nightstand mode, which I knew existed, but I could never get my watch to really sit there right with the charger and um, be in nightstand mode. So I really did some research and I found this one. Um, it comes in other colors and there are slightly different styles of it, but this thing is so great. It is really packable. Like it doesn't scratch. It doesn't weigh that much. It doesn't take up much space. So I've taken it on every trip since I got it. And, um, the first night that I set it up and I put the iPhone away, I definitely noticed like in the middle of the night, I was like, oh yeah, right. I'm not going to reach for my iPhone. It's not there. And then I, I knew my fingers were like twitching. Like I could feel my thumbs going like, <laughs> anyway, um, if you know somebody who has an Apple watch, uh, this is a great little, um, you know, like stocking, stocking stuffer for them. And as I said, on, on Amazon, it was $9 and um, I couldn't be more happy with it. That's my actually most favorite thing that I bought this year tech wise. And it's just a little lump of silicon, but it works great. Interesting gene that, that a watch stand changed your life, but I can completely understand it. Cause I, I know I, I do keep my iPhone by the bed um, because I use a white noise generator on it. Um, so, you know, I, there is always that temptation in the middle of the night and I try not to do it, but yeah, I, I, and I applaud you, you know, 
with all due respect to a lot of great products out there, these forty and fifty dollar Apple Watch stands make me just a little crazy. Because yeah. I, I don't have the one you have. I have something not not even similar, but just I think it's a twelve dollar, fourteen dollar Apple Watch stand, and it does what you need. It, it holds the watch and it charges it. But but you are looking for that night stand mode, so very nice. Yeah. Pick. Very nice and very affordable too. Stocking stuffer. Yeah, exactly. So, Art, do you have something that has changed your life or is going to change ours? Well, I'm not sure the change is probably too strong a word, but since we're going with stocking stuffer, I'll pick my cheapest of my picks and the smallest. It is, well, it's this big. It's really quite mm -hmm. tiny. So what is it, you might ask? It brags as being the world's smallest USB-C to USB converter. And it is basically not much, like, there's there's a USB-A device. And you just snap it on, and now it's a USB-C device. And it is absolutely tiny. It comes in the colors that Apple sell 12-inch MacBooks in. So this one is in space oh, gray. Wow. Or, sorry, this one's in silver. They do it in space gray and that horrible gold color as well. Um, and they're very subtle, and they're tiny, and they're, they're, they're about $10. So you can just... You know, have a handful of them in your computer bag or whatever, and they're just so handy for whatever you need to, to get something into your new modern Mac device. So a little USB-C to USB device. Um, I'll, I'll stick the link into the chat here so you can stick it in the show notes, Chuck. But it's from a company called Onda or something like that, or Noda, N-O-D-A. Um, and for some reason, it has a letter Q drawn on it. And there's no letter Q in their company name anywhere. So I don't really know why. But uh, there they are. They're on Amazon, and they're um, they were about ten pounds in the UK, and I think the Amazon US site showed them for ten ninety nine dollars. So a little stuffing somewhere. I'm very you know I always have one of these in my bag because they're just so handy to have when you have the little twelve inch MacBook. So that, that's a little stuffing somewhere to start. Art, when you when you connect it, is it mm -hmm. is the is the uh, is the fit tight enough that I could connect one and just say okay now I want this this uh, drive to be a USB C drive and it's not permanently gonna, yeah and it's not going to fall off in oh, my yeah. bag absolutely okay yes, definitely yeah yeah you could you could basically buy one of these for all your devices shove them on the end and never think about it again Bye. definitely here we go <laughs> you just you just cost me money okay. <laughs> All right. You do, you do this show like of your own free will, Chuck. Yeah. So I'm sure do every like, year it costs you money. all year for these couple of shows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The, the other shows are bad enough, but when it comes to this time of year. Yeah, just, the rest of my picks, Chuck, they're only going up in price from here. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I hope all my uh, all my friends are getting lumps of coal this year. They, they better expect it. But Chuck, you'll, you'll receive all these wonderful things. Ah, Send all your friends to the podcast and say, I want this, 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 and this. That's, you know, that's an idea. I'll, I'll make a wish list on Amazon and then just send it out to people. Good idea. Bart said, buy me this. Yeah. Ah, I said. <laughs> well, my first round pick, I'm, I'm going to continue of, based on, on the last Mac Jury um, gift guide. Um, in, that, in that show, I picked the iographer. Um, you picked the iographer. I picked, okay. <laughs> I picked the iographer, um, and but that was last show. This show, though, I uh, want to I want to recommend um, of, of a video app for your iPhone or your iPad, and that's an app called Filmic Pro, that gives you a whole lot more control over your video than the the built-in camera app. Um, it, it's what you do 4K. Uh, it's what you select. Excuse me, 4K, 1080p, 720p, um, different aspect ratios. As far as I'm concerned, the one killer thing that that the app has that the the built-in app that Filmic Pro has that the built-in app does not have are audio meters. So you can make sure that you're getting your audio. You can see your audio. Um, I, I've told the story a couple times now on the show where last year at NAB because I was just using the built-in app, I did not realize that I was not capturing video uh, audio. And I have some beautiful video that is silent film. <laughs> and, and Ouch. Yeah, Ouch. It, it, a lot, a lot of it. I probably lost about 12 interviews that way. So that's one reason I really like this. But the whole idea that you've got white balance control, you've got focus, um, you know, you name it, this app has it. And yet it's very, very easy to use. Uh, I believe it's $4.99 um, on, on the, the App Store. Uh, go get it. No matter what you're doing with video, it's going to make your video better. 
Uh, yes, it'll have this much of a learning curve because you have all these controls that you now have control over that the, the, the iOS camera app really doesn't give you control over, but I, you will learn to love it. So Filmic Pro uh, for iOS, go get it. So that's my first pick. I'm glad that we, we I found out who suggests who put the iographer on the list in a previous show because that would have been one of mine. You and I have not seen each other since I got an iographer clearly because we could have geeked out on the iographer together. But that is one of my favorite. That is okay. You know, besides the watch stand, that also <laughs> changed my life because I got the one for the for my phone, mm -hmm. and I used it at camp. And I could, and I had a wide angle lens on it most of the time, and I could get great photos. Uh, and plus, it's like a steady cam for your uh, for your iPhone. And so, I was getting better, way better uh, pictures than you know. We have photographers who come to App Camp, um, but they're not there all the time. And some of the best pictures are just by who's ever there. And I don't have the steadiest hand, so. Having that iographer frame to hold, anyway. I, I mean, I know we're not talking about the iographer, but man, uh, well, I would totally want to get the filmic app now because I, uh, I have two iographers now. After the first one, I, I can't use it anymore because I have an iPhone seven instead of the six S, and I'm waiting for the seven to come out. And I was feeling like I need an iographer though, so I bought one for my iPad Mini, and um, I bought the full kit with the microphone and the lighting and the, the, um, the little tripod. It's, it's an amazing little video kit, you know, uh, portable video kit. But yeah, I was using the standard uh, Apple video app. And um, I, I'm excited about that idea of taking that up a notch as well. Yeah, and and taking nothing away from the the Apple app because it it does a fine job and it, and boy the video looks fantastic, um, but just having that little extra control for when you want it, and and it takes a little while to to, to learn when you want it, mm -hmm. but when when you do, boy, it's it's phenomenal. So, okay, Gene, I think that's that's an idea for one <laughs> of the shows is an iographer show. Yeah, totally. That would be really cool. Um, okay. I'm a, I'm a huge fan and. Uh, I can't go like five steps at a conference now without somebody asking me what it is and <laughs> me giving, I mean, I'm an unofficial iographer evangelist. Um, so, well, I have another um, thing that has, that doesn't have any electricity that runs through it is going to be my next pick. And that is my um, Apple pencil case from Waterfield. Um, this is a, uh, so I, I, the last time I was on the show with you was to talk about the iPad Pro, I'm pretty sure. And I tried to talk you into buying an Apple Pencil because I was very high on the Apple Pencil. Did you finally get one, Chuck? I, I did not. I just <laughs> I, I, I decided, okay, I'm going to try to figure out what I'm going to use an Apple Pencil for. And as much as I would like it as just to, to, to play with, uh, I, I tried drawing something again, and it just it's just not my thing. <laughs> so uh, obviously um i am very enamored of the pencil i'm not ex an artist exactly but i have um you know been playing with all the various art programs and um i also use it um sometimes there's an app called uh, stylus i think it's called stylus it's like a keyboard um that reads handwriting and 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 so it's a it's a handwriting recognition keyboard. Um, yeah, it's a stylus, stylus stylus keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. I, I don't know how it is so good. It, it I mean it just reads my handwriting with no training, no anything. It right off the bat just started, you know. And and so that's pretty hand. It's pretty nice to have the stylus for because sometimes I just feel like writing as opposed to typing. But uh, the Apple Pencil, which I'm holding up here for the video is possibly the most easy to lose piece of $100 equipment that you could ever own. It's round. It's totally round and shiny and it it anywhere that you know you put it that it can roll off of it will roll off. And especially if you're sitting in a couch or on your bed or wherever it just it disappears. I've I've thought, "Oh my god, I've totally lost it a couple of times." 
And I really wanted something that would keep me from losing it. And I tried um, a little clip thing, which we talked about in that show, but that wasn't really quite what I wanted. Um, so I have a Waterfield backpack, which I love. And, um, and it might have been one of my picks last year because I was so, that was my awesome piece of uh, kit for last year. So I thought, I will spend $29, and that's what this is, for this le- very beautifully crafted leather thing that only holds an Apple Pencil. It has a clip on it, which I could clip you know, to the inside of my bag if I don't want it to get lost. But the beauty of having this case is that I'm always putting it in and taking it out of this case. So, And the case is not going to roll around anywhere. So I can find it easily. It's not... It keeps my Apple pencils separate from all my other pens and pencils. Um, and it's not that big, and it's really a beautiful little piece of thing. So I think the Apple pencil is worthy of this beautiful uh, <laughs> hand-stitched $29 leather case. Um, and if you know somebody who's always losing their Apple pencil, uh, I highly recommend it, or anything really from Waterfield, all their the sfbags.com. All their stuff is, is just gorgeous. You're the second <laughs> panelist that has come up with uh, a Waterfield pick. Um, yeah. And, and you're right. I mean, their stuff is absolutely beautiful. But, yeah, the earlier pick was not an Apple Pencil case. I didn't even know they made an Apple Pencil case. So good, good pick. Anything from Waterfield's a good pick. Yeah. Today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Drobo, a family of safe, expandable, yet simple-to-use storage arrays. Drobos are designed to protect your important data forever. This holiday season, give someone a Drobo to keep all their files and memories safe forever. Okay, folks, I've got a deal for you. You've heard that one before, right? But this is really a deal on something that I recommend and really use every single day. Right now, Mac Voices listeners can save 20% off their purchase of a Drobo 5D, Drobo 5DT, Drobo 5N, or any 8-drive or 12-drive system at drobostore.com by December 31st, 2016, using the discount code capital M, capital V, 20. That's MV20. This is a savings of $100 to $800, depending on the model purchased. Why Drobo? First, reliability. Because they are storage arrays, which is a technical way of saying that each Drobo has multiple disk drives in it, your risk of losing data to a hard drive failure goes way, way down. I mean way, way down. If a drive goes bad, you just get a red light on that drive, and you know your data is safe. If you select the dual drive redundancy option, two drives can go bad, and your data is still safe. Second, expandability. With Drobo, you aren't limited by the size of the drives you install. If you only need or can afford one terabyte or two terabyte drives now, no problem. Or if your needs are huge, install eight terabyte drives, no problem. But what if you want to upgrade your one or two terabyte drives later as your storage needs grow? No problem. Drobo makes the process automatic. No copying files back and forth, hither and yon. Just pop the smaller drive out and slide the larger drive in. Drobo works its magic in the background, so you not only get the additional storage space, but you don't lose a beat. Just keep working and accessing the files stored on your Drobo like nothing ever happened. Except that there's suddenly a whole lot more space, of course. No matter which Mac you have, how much storage you need, or how you want to connect, Drobo has a solution for you. With models that support 5, 8, or even 12 drive bays, with options for USB 3, USB C, Thunderbolt 1, Thunderbolt 2, network, or gigabit Ethernet, there's a Drobo that's right for you. I'll be telling you more about why you need a Drobo or two in your life in the next few shows, but there's one thing I'm absolutely sure of. Right now, at this very minute, there's data on a hard drive somewhere in your life that you don't want to lose, that you can't afford to lose. Maybe it's a picture of your great-great-great-grandfather. Maybe it's a picture of your two-month-old child. Maybe it's the novel you're writing or the business proposal you're working on. Whatever it is, it's safer stored on a Drobo. Visit drobostore.com by December 31st, 2016, and use the discount code MV20 at checkout to take 20% off the Drobo of your choice. Drobo has never given us this kind of offer before, and I sincerely hope you take advantage of it, because I have never, never lost any data stored on a Drobo. 
I want that same level of protection for you, your great, great, great grandfather, your child, your novel, and your business proposal. They and you deserve it. That's 20% off Drobo at drobostore.com with the code MV20. Thanks to Drobo for their ongoing support of Mac Voices. Art, round two. Um, okay, so I'm going up a little bit in price on this one. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, so this does have a USB plug, so it definitely counts as tech, but it's a little bit unorthodox. So I've been doing a lot of exercise this year to try get fit, and I'm succeeding. But now that it's winter time, that means cycling after work, which means cycling in the dark. Now, historically, what that meant was an awful, awful lot of batteries. But a very clever company called CatEye have made USB rechargeable bike lights. So when you run out of battery, you shove it in a USB port. So it's brilliant. So it's saving me a fortune on batteries. So I have, I currently have one and I have another one on order. So when you're cycling, there's two distinct jobs to be done. There's the being seen and there's the seeing. And the being seen really needs to be a flashy bright light. So the first one I have is a Volt 80, it's called. So it's called 80 because it's 80 lumens. It is very small and compact. It goes onto your handlebars with a sort of a rubbery thing. And it has five hours of doing, well, hang on, this. <laughs> really quite bright. Wow. <laughs> and then when you're done, you pop the back off and there's a little USB. So you just shove it into an Apple charger or whatever charger you're having yourself because it's just a USB-A. And then it charges back up and oh. you're good to go again. So... That's the Volt 80, so that's $29, or $29.99 on their website. And then, given how well this has worked, I have ordered, but it's due to arrive probably on Thursday, I have ordered the big brother of this, which is the Volt 300, which is called the Volt 300 because it's 300 lumens. Um, and that is a light for seeing, and it will clip onto the bicycle helmet. So instead of seeing where the handlebars are pointing, I will see where I am looking, which is really quite a different thing. And again... USB chargeable, and they promise, uh, it was quite a few, I think it was 10 hours or something at, at, at 300 lumens or something ridiculous. Uh, no, sorry, it's uh, three hours at 300 lumens, eight hours at 100 lumens, and 18 hours at 50 lumens, which I guess is the limp home when I run out of battery mode. Um, that one's a little bit more expensive, uh, although it is on special offer right now for 49.99, but the usual selling price is 69.99 for the Volt 300. So CatEye is the name of the company. Their, their logo is a really cute sort of lolcat looking thing. And they have made the best bike lights for the last, for as long as I've been a cyclist. But these USB powered ones really have me very happy. So the entire Volt range from CatEye is my pick. Bart, it's really, I mean, it's, it's a great pick. Um, two questions. First of all, mm -hmm. if you if you were out and started to run low, can you plug that into uh, one of the, the large external battery packs that everyone is selling and will it still operate or is it just, does it shut down at that point and just charges? I don't know. So the first thing that happens is you, you get, when it's down to about 20%, you, a, a warning light comes on. So generally speaking, my approach is, okay, I'll charge it overnight then. So you have enough time to get home generally. So when, well, basically the power button goes red when it's running low on juice. And then with the Volt 300, you would turn it down to a lower power setting and then cycle home. And then with this one, I know I still have at least an hour uh, when the red light comes on to get home. Mm -hmm. And I don't tend not to go any further away, you know, because if I'm an hour away from home, that means I've, I'm on a two hour cycle, <laughs> which is a lot on a winter night. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right, right now, when I left today, it said feels like minus three. I did not go out wow. for two hours today. No, I wouldn't think so. I still burned my 800 calories, but I did not go out for two hours. <laughs> Okay, so I think it's really interesting, though, that that you know, using USB as a way to charge stuff is even a thing. It just yeah. is a testament to the fact that at least you know, for some of us, we're more likely to charge something if it's USB as opposed to something we have to plug into a outlet in the wall. Um, you or know, like, rechargeable batteries or something awful yes. like that. I mean, yeah, we've had this technology I mean, for years, and everyone just shoves a Duracell into their bike lights. And now there's a USB plug on it. It's like, oh, great, we'll charge it. We'll save battery. <laughs> and, and Gene, that's exactly what I was going to ask with my second question is, is what is oh. it about USB that has, has done this? Because, yeah, I, I have the same thing. I mean, you've got portable speakers. You've got all kind of things. The only thing I can't charge via USB are the, um, 
the rechargeable like AA batteries. Those have to be plugged into the wall because there's some things I have that just they still require AA batteries. But I, it, I, you, I mean, yeah. you, you can find crazy little little personal fans, you know, that you can plug into your laptop at the office to keep you cool, and just crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but it always USB powered. I, I don't know what it is about USB is other than the fact that we're all geeks and maybe that's it that it appeals to well, us. All of our computers have it, but also pretty much every mobile phone today, the power block has on the top of it a USB port, whether it's an Apple power block, whether it's a Samsung power block, whoever makes it, the chances are you have a USB power block. So it, they're just piggybacking off the fact that everyone has a USB power block because this thing doesn't come with a power block. It just comes as is. It assumes you have a USB port. Right? There is yeah. no power block in the box. It's just the light. Hmm. By the way, I did have a USB battery charger at one point. I don't have it anymore, but I think those exist, you know, for charging rechargeable batteries. Really? I did not know yeah. that. <laughs> so, something to Google. Yeah. But, yeah. It was like, would do two batteries, and it, it went in a little, you know, case that had a USB, you know, plugged into the USB outlet. Hmm. But well, wonder if that puts any extra strain on the power supply of the, in this case, the, the, the MacBook that you're plugging it into. Yeah, that's well, a good question. Yeah, I mean, I don't use that many batteries, and I prefer my four battery charger that plugs into the wall behind me. And everything yeah. that uses batteries is here, right here in front of me, like nothing um, that I'm mobile with actually has batteries in it now that I think about it. Hmm. Huh. No camera. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So I'm debating on what my second pick should be, but I think I'm going to go big. Um, uh -oh. And and so I'm, I want to suggest, and this is not going to be a surprise to anyone because I talk about this constantly, but it, it hasn't changed my life. It just makes my life so much easier. I sleep better at night, so I don't have some of the problems Gene does. Um, and that is if you have anything, any, any bit of data that you care about, get a Drobo and put it on there, and it will be protected. Um, you're going you're gonna to see a Drobo 5N back here. Um, there are multiple other Drobo. Actually, there may be two back here. Um, there are multiple Drobos here because I don't like to lose things. I confess to being a little bit of a digital hoarder, but with some of the videos and the shows and all, I want to have archives and I want to have backups. But the, the great, there are a lot of great things about Drobo, and I'm not going to make this a commercial because we'll save that for the commercial because they are a sponsor of Mac Voices, but that is not why I pick them. Um, I pick them because if, if I have a hard drive that goes bad, if I have two hard drives that go bad in a Drobo unit, I'm still protected. And you know, it can be something as simple as a power surge or just the fact that these are, these are rotational drives. Sooner or later, they're going to go out. Um, and it's easy to say, oh, it'll never happen to me. It'll never happen to me. Well, it's happened to me plenty of times. And I'm betting that the people on the on the panel here with me have had it happen to them, too. Well, Chuck, it happened to me this weekend. Oh, yeah, see? There you go. See? It happens to everyone. It's, it's not if a spinning hard drive is going to die. It's when. when. Yep. Yeah. So that, I, luckily, have my data on two hard drives because if it doesn't exist on two hard drives, it doesn't exist. So I'm now in the uncomfortable position that it exists on one hard drive. Yeah. While I wait for FedEx to deliver me my new hard drive. <laughs> and, and that's the nice thing about Drobos is that, you know, you're sitting there. It, it is, it, it's, a, it's a set of four or five, depending on which unit, or eight, depending on which units you get. Um, that all, all the drives are in there, but it just it's formatted, uh, if you wish, as one big block of storage. And so your, drive, your data really isn't stored necessarily on just one of those drives. It's stored on that whole block. And if one of the drives goes bad, and if you set it up right, even if two of the drives go bad, you don't lose anything. You get little nasty red lights that say replace the drives. And at that point, Bart, I'm with you. You know, then it's like, okay, in my case, I'll, I'll go to Best Buy and run over and get something, you know, to make sure I've got at least one drive back. But to, to be able to suffer, withstand two hard drive failures is 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 key for me. So if you're if you're looking for mass storage. Just mass storage, go out and get a Drobo, please. You, you've, video, photos, important documents or important scan documents, all those things. You know, the, the, the hours that it would take you to replace them and or recreate them, if they could be recreated, uh, is, 
is I don't even like to think about it. Just get a Drobo. So any I, Drobo fans here? I don't know. If, uh, I, I I can't afford Drobos, unfortunately. So I, I go the rather nerdy route. I run my own Linux servers in the house of old Dell boxes and have them all synced data to each other. So the, you probably don't want to emulate my particular approach. But the point is, <laughs> data is always on at least two disks because they die. Like, it, yep. you know, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it... Everyone has something important, memories of some sort, and it will die. So have it twice. If you don't have it twice, you don't have it. Yeah. 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 yeah it's uh, just talking to people who don't have any backup. I try to get them to get the one going. And then, but I say, after you're good with this, I'm going to come back and say, you got to have another one because <laughs> that one isn't good enough. But I know that if I say, you've got to have two, and you have to have this offline back, you know, I mean, offsite backup as well. Um, I, I have two hard drives to back up my Mac. I rotate them um, with uh, with Super Duper. Um, and then I also have Backblaze. Um, that was my, you know, you get yeah. comfortable with your two and then you're like, but um, I tried keeping one offsite you know, like a third one off site, but I wasn't really rigorous about that. And then now, honestly, I've had back blaze for over a year and I don't even re remember that I have it because it just works so silently in the background. Every once in a while I check it and I'm like, oh yeah, totally backed up as of like two hours ago. And that's a nice feeling too. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. My, my approach is keep a time machine because that protects you from, oops, I shouldn't have clicked that. <laughs> Which is a, a kind of problem, right? That's a different problem yeah. to my hard drive blown up. There's the, yes. oh, did I just hit control back or command backspace and then empty the trash? I did, didn't I? Oopsie daisies. Yeah. So that's what the time machine is for. But that's only one. So that's not yeah. enough. So then the, one of the best things I bought is, uh, we'll call it a bonus pick then. So I'll make up for the fact that we're a panelist <laughs> down. An IC DAW. It's just a little thing you shove in over USB that's a drive toaster. So you buy oh. completely bare drives and you shove them in and you back up to them. So I use uh, Carbon Copy Cloner, same difference as Super Duper, mm -hmm. and I have a an identical set of four terabyte drives, and there is always one of them at home, and then one of them in my office and work. They're encrypted, and I toast one, then I bring it into work, which means there's two drives away from home, so it's not in the same place as my real data, and I bring one home, and I toast it, and then I swap them around. And so at mm -hmm. no point in the procedure is all my data in one place. It's either half of it is with me, or two thirds of it is with me, and one of it is at home. So it, it works that way. And I just have a calendar thing to say, by the way, Bert, it's a Thursday. That means you bring your toasted drive into work. And they just they just <laughs> rotate. It works fine. Yep. And, and, being, Bert, and being a photographer, uh, you understand the, the necessity because you can't go back and get photos of things. I mean, they, you just can't no. recreate them. No, it's gone, right? It's, it was, I, I was so cranky about myself a few weekends ago. I had all set up. I knew the photograph I wanted. I'm working on a project. The light was right. Everything was right. I got there. I turned on the camera and there was no memory card in it. Gone. It's just the same problem, right? It's gone. And the chances are uh, the perfect, the low sun, the warm low sun on the perfectly yellow leaves, that's probably gone. I might get lucky next year. It might take me 10 years to recreate that photograph. It's probably gone. It's exactly the same effect as losing my hard drive. I never, probably never <laughs> going to get it back. Yeah. So now that we've terrorized everyone, uh, yeah. <laughs> Gene, uh, kick us off for round three. Round three. Um, well, no, the, um, we were talking about batteries. I think I will talk about another thing I got this year is uh, Anchor. Um, it's a the PowerCore 13,000 portable charger. So 13,000 milliamp hours. Uh, you know, I'm not the geekiest about power. Um, I just know that I had... Um, now that I have the iPad Pro and I use it almost um, all the time compared to my MacBook, uh, I want to be able to charge it up, and this has the power to do that. Um, it has two USB ports. It has a micro um, – is that micro USB that um, – you uh, charge it with, but then the, then it has, so you could charge two things at a time with this. It's a very plain black box. I thought I lost it last week. I was in New York because it was at the bottom of my, my suitcase and it's the same kind of plastic. It's like, you know, the sort of texturized hardened plastic. 
as like your suitcase frame. And my girlfriend and I in New York, she, I was like, I lost this thing. I can't find it anywhere. We looked all over, like under the couch, whatever. And I got home. I was putting my suitcase away and I hear thump. I'm like, Oh, it's still there. I almost ordered one like on the spot when I thought, okay, it's missing. And I'm going to just get another one. Cause I know I'm going to want it. Um, it has a little case, uh, a little pouch it comes in too, which is kind of nice. Um, and if you put a little, uh, micro USB thunder, uh, not the lightning, uh, you know, what do you call that? That dual thing that you can switch between USB and lightning that will fit in this little case too. Then you're pretty much, you're set. You just need your wall wart or whatever to charge it with. Or, um, so, um, one of the things that, oh, and everybody should have something like this, I think. So that's why I think it makes a really good present. This one is maybe overkill for some of your less techie, less mobile uh, dependent friends, but there's all level of, of battery packs out there. One of the things that I realized in the last year that why I rely on it, even though I know, oh, I'm going to be able to plug this in on the plane, in the hotel room, in the conference room, like there's never got to be a place where I'm not right next to a plug. But you never know for sure, especially like in a hotel room, if they, you know, they'll be They'll, they'll be outlets and they'll just be behind the headboard of the bed, you know, or underneath the desk. Like, you know, some of the newer hotels, they're, they're, they've got um, outlets, you know, are built into the lamps or whatever. That's great. But I've been in some lately where I had really nowhere to plug in my iPad and I wanted to read or watch a video or whatever on it. And I didn't want to run it down to zero. Um while I was doing that. And so I just plugged it into the, the, the battery pack to this battery pack. And you know, it's, it's fine. I, I'm not sure how many times it would charge up the iPad pro, but I know it will charge a phone at least three or four times. Um, with all the, it's, it takes a little while to charge that one up cause it, it, it holds so much power, but then, then you're really good to go. So, um, I like mine. It's anchor. And I know a lot of people are very fond of that. Um, brand. Um, I also have a small one that's like the size of a lipstick case, uh, really. And it's kind of pretty too, cause it's gold. And that comes from ja uh, Jackery that, um, will just charge up one iPhone. And that's that I throw into my purse pretty much whenever I'm going somewhere. Cause either I need to charge or somebody else needs to charge. And that's another nice thing about having a charger with you all the time is that you can make friends that way because, <laughs> That not everybody is, has the foresight that you did to bring something to charge up their device and, and they're just eternally grateful. So, um, yeah, but yes, if, they, if you're traveling to a conference or something, being the bearer of power at the end of the evening makes you very popular. Yes. I, I feel like we're in a singles bar, you know, we're talking about how to meet people with, with, with <laughs> over USB chargers. So it's very strange. Electricity is the key to all good relationships. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. like I said, it can be a really cute little stocking stuffer if you get one of the small ones or, or this one. It's not that big. It's, it's really like the size of a, maybe a, a, a large bar of soap, not even. It's, yeah. Yeah. And Anchor, I'm, I'm with Eugene. I, I could probably fill a whole show with with the Anchor products I have. I love them. They're, they're not overly expensive. They're really well built. And the company really does stand behind them. So, yeah, right yeah. there with you. Good pick. And sadly, the, the, the last time I, I ended up really having to rely on those kind of USB things was a lot of hospitals are, I mean, they have power for the life support machines and stuff, but they don't have power for family visiting people. Um, so we had a couple of family things going on in the last 24 months, and we ended up spending more time in hospitals than we wanted to. And without battery packs, we actually would have had big problems. And yeah. it really, you know, just being able to dive into your laptop bag and pull out a power pack and say, don't worry, mum, plug it in here for 20 minutes, you'll be fine. And it, yeah. it just makes people in a terrible situation less stressed. And that is worth a fortune. So definitely yeah. a good thing to have. You have no idea when you're going to want power. Just have some with you. Yeah. yeah. As great as the capacities are for our iPhones and iPads, 
we use them so much that you burn them down. And, you know, yeah. the time that you burn it down to, you know, four or five, ten percent is going to be the time that you suddenly something happens and you need it desperately. And so I'm, I'm right there with you, Bart. Yeah. Good, yeah. good, good practical pick, Gene. Okay. Thanks. Bart, what do you have? Okay. What do I got? Okay. So going up in price again. So we're into sort of the $130 sort of range now. Um, again, to do with cycling. Um, so, you can't use, well, you shouldn't use ordinary headphones when you're out on the bike because they block the surrounding sound and therefore you won't hear the moron in the car who's about to kill you. <laughs> so you need some sort of headphone that does not cover your ear at all, but for your sanity, you still need to be able to listen to your podcasts. So the answer <laughs> for me is bone conduction headphones. Now, I, last year I bought a pair from a British company called Damson and they were very nice, but they died. And... Damson really haven't upped their game. So this year I replaced them with a set of headphones from an American company, which come in a really nice little pouch, but uh, you won't lose these in the bottom of your bag. They're a bit electric blue. Um, the company is called Aftershocks, and this particular model you're seeing here is their new uh, Trex Titanium. So it's actually plastic-coated titanium that is sort of the back bit. And well, I can't really put them on now because I have these big cans on, but they basically go over your ear and sort of around sort of the bottom of your neck. And then you have volume buttons here, which is just comfortably behind your ear. Um, and actually, so the, 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 the Damsons had this massive battery pack that hung at the back of your neck, whereas these just have two little battery packs behind each ear. And they're half the weight of what I used to have. They're twice as good sound quality, and they're just, they're just better in every way. And there's only been a year's worth of development of technology. So they actually press, they have these these sort of pads here, and they sit against your jawbone, and the sound mm. goes through your head, and you hear it. And it's a little bit weird at first, because it's no, it's sound, and it's clear, and it's crisp, but it's not coming through your ears. It's it, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, perhaps, but it is amazing, because you hear everything, and you hear your podcasts. And of course, they're Bluetooth and so forth. So I am immensely happy with these <laughs> Trex Titaniums. Like, you know, I say I like the Damsons, but these things are twice as good in every way. They're just amazing little devices. So I, I, have, I bought these about a month ago, and I am totally and utterly in love with them. And they come in electric blue like these ones because that matches my Apple Watch. Uh, but they also come in bright yellow and bright green. And there's probably a subtle black as well for people who like subtle. But as I say, I like the blue ones. Yeah, I have um, I, I have a pair of Aftershocks, the bone conduction, not the not the Trex, though, um, the mm -hmm. The home model, if you will, and I it's, find it incredibly useful to be able to to listen to something more or less privately. You know, it's it's yeah, I, it's not totally silent. If somebody's standing beside yeah. me, they're going to know that there's something going on, but they're not going to be able to hear what it is. And and I've I've paired them with my iPhone, and frankly, they're not a not a half bad. Um, uh, they're not an earpiece, I guess. So they're a headset. <laughs> Um, yeah. But the mic is is pretty darn good. The, you know, the people I've talked to with them don't complain and say what's wrong. You know, it, it's well, just... I like my mom. My mom isn't always the, the the quickest to pick things up, but I, she will phone me and I will have a conversation with her while out cycling. And then about twenty minutes in, she go, "Are you cycling again?" I say, "Yes, mom. It's <laughs> after work, that's what I do every day." I say, oh, okay. I thought it sounded a bit windy. Yeah, <laughs> I am moving, wow. but yeah, they work so fine. Yeah. So they have a microphone in them as well. Yeah. Yeah. So they are a full headset. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's impressive. And they have a button. So when you're out on the bike, it's if the phone is ringing, the button answers the phone. If you're listening to a podcast, the button pauses. If you know the button is kind of clever in what it does, and if you hold it for three seconds, it does one thing. The manual has a whole bunch of things, but I, I just use it to play pause and answer the phone, and it does that perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's if if and Art, you're right. Trying to explain to someone exactly how they sound is i mean i if you're if you're an audio snob if you, and if you're listening to you know you expect a perfect audio experience this is not it but this is a very usable practical enjoyable uh, audio experience and you also i think it's gotten better chuck because yeah. the ones i bought last year i wouldn't have said i listen to music on them i'll say they're perfect podcasting devices but these treks i'd listen to music on them yeah, and so they're getting better. They're getting better every year. So I'm really impressed with them. Yeah, and and yeah. yet you don't. You can still hear everything that's going on around you. So 
it's it's an interesting <laughs> flip on like the um, the noise canceling headphones where you're trying to escape everything. Now you want to hear yeah. everything, but you still want to hear what you want to hear, but you don't want a boombox sitting on your shoulder or annoying all the people around you. And that's what um, what they do. So yeah, yeah, good pick. And yeah. um, and the the, the tracks are specifically marketed at exercise so they're water resistant so if you get rained on you're fine and that kind of thing they just say don't charge them immediately after wearing them and getting them all sweaty because then when you open the flap for the usb again usb charging uh, when you open the flap for the usb you obviously let the water in so they yeah. say leave them for 20 minutes and then charge them and again the charge uh, i think they offer six hours officially and and they do they live up to that they really do last six hours good pick good pick i don't think i don't think we've had any headphones at all so that's, that's good. Or You're, bike lights, you see. Or bike lights, yeah. Good point. <laughs> well, my third round, um, I'm not sure if this is controversial or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'm going to suggest that you pick up an Apple Music gift card for 12 months. Um, here in the U.S., they're $99, so you're paying a bit of a discount. Um, yes, you are locked in. If you're one of those people that likes to jump in and out of services, you're locked in for 12 months. But you're saving, uh, you're saving quite a bit of money. And Apple Music keeps getting better, I think. Um, still not there, still not perfect. I still have my uses for Pandora um, because I pref much prefer their, uh, the, the music genome for helping me discover new music. But I have to say that over the past two months, I find myself playing a lot more with the Apple Music um, playlists and recommendations for me. And they're, they're hitting a lot more than they were before because for a long time I really didn't like them. So I think it may be time for you to lock yourself into a service and save a little money doing it. Um, so you and, and this is not, just to be clear, because in a previous show I picked the Apple uh, iTunes gift cards. This, the, these are two different things. You can get those. And that's fine and, and save some money. But with this, this is a, a gift card dedicated strictly to Apple Music. And I think it makes a, a big, big difference because you're suddenly free to explore, you know, music that you haven't really thought about before, whether they're recommending it or whether it's something that you hear on the radio and you decide you want to try. Or maybe it's just an artist you've heard about and you never want to lay down the money just, just to try an album or two. Um, it's, it's a great service. So, uh, yeah, Apple, an Apple Music gift card. Save some money. Cool. S services? I, I have a question. Can yeah. I ask? Because uh, yeah. I'm new to the subscription game. Um, I was like, eh, I don't really think I want to do that. But Pan I was uh, subscribing, actually, to Pandora. I'll subscribe to anything. If they take the ads out of it. You know, I'll be very happy. You know, there's a, there's a pretty high price I will pay not to listen to ads because I can't take it. But, um, but I was finding their the you know the radio stations they're kind of repetitive. So um, I decided to go for a Spotify um, subscription, which is the first time I've subscribed to music, and I'm really liking that. Um, you know, so that's like ten dollars a month. It's cheaper than Apple Music. Um, and you know, I can, I mean, I can, there's a lot of things I can do with it. I, I'm not like somebody who's constantly trying to find new music. I'm usually trying to find old music, you know, and say, oh yeah, that album that I never even got on CD, you know, I want to listen to this one, you know, that I would have never ripped it to begin with. So just curious, have you used Spotify and how did they compare? Um, yeah, Gene, I have. I don't. I've, I've let Bart answer um, in a second, but I've used Spotify when Apple Music first came out. Um, my preference was Pandora, and, and I'm talking about music discovery now. Was mm -hmm. Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music? Apple Music now is is moved into second place, very close behind Pandora. Um, I think Pandora is maybe at times a little easier to understand, um, frankly. But at the same mm -hmm. time, I feel like Apple Music, especially the iOS uh, app, has gotten a lot better so that I'm not, I'm not struggling to find what I'm looking for the way I, I used to. Uh, it was one, mm -hmm. of the, one of the reasons I was, I was kind of back and forth as to which one I was going to, to lock in with. Um, so, mm -hmm. But now I'm pretty comfortable with Apple Music until or if Pandora comes on and actually does a full-blown music subscription service. Then I'll have to reevaluate everything. 
But for right now, I you know I think you could do a lot worse. And and one of the key things for me, and you can you know you can kind of do this. You can definitely do it with Amazon and Google Play. But I want to be able to take those pieces of music that I have that are not available on on the iTunes, uh, sorry, the Apple Music Store or in Apple Music, upload them, and then they're there for me. That's mm-hmm. that, that's a big thing because my tastes run toward things that um, are are a bit, yeah, they're a bit out of the mainstream, and so mm-hmm. you know. When I want to hear that album and I'm somewhere else, I don't want to have to think, well, gee, did I load it on my phone or, or my iPad? Just it's, it's always right there waiting for me. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very happy with Apple Music right now. Art, how about you? Spotify, Apple Music, anything? Uh, no, um, I, I, don't, I don't listen to enough music to justify it. I, my own music collection is so big that there are tracks in it which say listen count one. And they've been in my in my in my library for like five or ten years. So I, I haven't even caught up with my own music I actually. Own because I just listen to podcasts because I don't. You know, I, I'm always either watching telly or listening to podcasts. So I have Netflix. So I'm happy to pay for for a subscription, just not to music. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Gene, you're doing so much traveling. I think you probably music is probably your best option. Uh, yeah, I mean. I don't know. I just have I, since I've never subscribed before. I, you know, I haven't really hit the limit of what, um, you know, with Spotify. That's you know been. Um, I mean, I can find anything I'm looking for on it so far. Um, I can download what I want to have offline, and I can make playlists, um, and I can. And it has radio stations. I mean, you know, not radio stations, but stations like a radio playing stuff that, you know, that's what I liked about Pandora. But I feel this is better than Pandora for that. And um, and I also like they have a, a partnership with Starbucks. And when you're in Starbucks, you can find out what song you're listening to in the Starbucks app, and it will add it to your Spotify list. And very... What I, I don't know what it is. I mean, but at Starbucks, they they seem to curate the music really well. So I'm usually going, hey, I wonder what that is. And it's something I've never heard of and would never find on my own. So um, so that's kind of cool. And, I, yeah, I'm a sucker for any kind of like, oh, oh show me how that works. You know, <laughs> like you have you have these app integrations. I will totally try to use them and see what happens. So. Um, but yeah, I, I feel Apple music. I never signed on when they first launched it. And, um, because I wasn't doing subscriptions and then, uh, anyway, I, it's good to keep in mind. I, I'm sure eventually I'll come around to the fold if that's what, where I stay with subscriptions, because part of me is also like, well, the reason I could justify a subscription at all is like, I would probably spend like $10 a month on an, you know, an album you know, and I was like, especially this year, we've had a lot of very, um, important, you know, music, musicians and artists dying. And I'd be like, Oh, I don't have that album, you know, of Prince's or David Bowie's. And I'd just go and buy it on that day. Cause I'd be like, that's all I want to listen to today. You know, now I can get that and more, you know, with the subscription and I'm starting to appreciate the, the value of that. But, um, but for people who own a lot of music, and I don't actually, like I'm sure compared to Bart, not even a fraction, but uh, I, I could see not having subscriptions. Um, yeah, I, I think Apple still is, I think Apple still is offering a free trial period for Apple Music. So you could always yeah. sign up for that, you know, compare and contrast. And if you like it, then go get a gift card and save yourself some money. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Something I wanted to pick, but it doesn't exist, which is really annoying. <laughs> what I wanted to pick, I thought it would be a really cool off-the-wall pick that no one else would have picked, was a gift card to give someone a lynda.com subscription. They don't sell wow. it. Really? They'll give you a free trial, but they won't let you buy a Lynda for someone else. And wow. having a lynda.com subscription completely changed my life this year, but I can't give it as a gift because I can't, I can't give it. I can't say, here, have my credit card, buy yourself a lynda.com. I mean, that's not going to work. So I wasn't able to make that. That is thing. incredible. Yeah. That I mean, just as a marketing person, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm 
I'm kind of blown away by that. So. I, I even tried logging out. I thought maybe they're not showing me this option because I'm logged in. So I logged out to see what it would look like to someone who doesn't have an account, and I still couldn't find it. So, oh. hmm. wow. so then I had to go and find bike lights and things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Linda, I hope you're listening. Um, hmm? we, we need gift. We need some kind of gift subscription. Yeah, interesting, I Bart. I did a- not know that. Yeah. Hmm. So that's three rounds. Um, so this is your last chance to uh, share your your holiday cheer. And I, I don't know. I was I was trying to be cute, and it's not going to work. So what's what's your fourth round pick, G? Um, well, I'm going so low tech this time. I think I'm going to go back to something that has no electricity requirements. Mm-hmm. Although I suppose you can get it as an ebook. Um, <laughs> But you would not want to. It is called, it's a book. It's a hardcover book. came out in October called Overview, A New Perspective of Earth. And I read about it in an article. It came out right like towards the end of October. And I was going to send my brother the link because I know it's basically it's a collection of, of amazing satellite photographs of the Earth. And um, of not... Uh, uh, of man-made earth, you know, so there's like uh, a photo and I believe the, 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 it started out as an Instagram account and the guy who put it together, he, he, he grabs, he puts some, you know, variety of satellite photos together to, to make something that looks really good um, of a certain location. So it really looks like somebody is just way up high shooting photographs uh, of um, the thing that caught my eye immediately was like this airfield with all these um, abandoned airplanes, you know, like so a hundred like jets, jumbo jets, like in it looks like a, a, a airport that is in serious trouble, you know, because they have no so congested, you know, so or but other photos will be like the tulip fields, you know, uh, in Holland, and, and it's just it's a nice, it's a beautiful book. Um, what we, you know, have often referred to as coffee table book, although I have no coffee table anymore and I don't know anybody who has one, but I bought, uh, instead of sending my brother the link, I was like, wait, his birthday is next week. And I'm sure if I could get this, I could get it, you know, from Amazon in a day or two. And oh my God, it was the best present because he's really into space and photography and looking at things from high up. Um, and you know, he's into his drones and putting cameras on his drones. So this is like the ultimate, it's, um, the ultimate view of the earth. And when I gave it to him, his birthday's on Halloween, you know, he really got sucked right into it. It's, um, and my nephew, who's only three years old was also, you know, he really wanted to look at it, but of course, then you got a three-year-old kind of touching the pages and whatever. And I finally said, you know what, Bob, it's, this book was only $25. So like, don't freak out, you know, if your son messes up the pages, you could get another one. Or, you know, it's not like some of these coffee table books are $100. Like this is a coffee table book. If you didn't know, you might think it was like, I mean, I think it lists for yeah, it's list for forty dollars, but it's something that could be fifty or sixty dollars. It's big and it's really beautiful, and um, it's all like five star reviews on Amazon. It's it's number one bestseller in aerial photography. Um, so, uh, in fact, it's actually temporarily out of stock. So, if you it's, it's you know, so popular, it's gone. It's so popular, it's gone. I'm sure there are other places you can get it from. Plus, I'm sure they'll get it back into. Uh, stock before Christmas, but, um, for the, the photography and space geeks in your life, um, the people who like, who always take the window seat, that's my brother. Um, this is the book for them. It's, it's an awesome book and it makes a great gift. Good. Sounds amazing. Yeah, it does. It does. I'm, I'm, I'm really intrigued about the, uh, the airport in distress. I've got to go and look, look. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I can only imagine, I, I loved your examples because talk about two, two diverse things. And uh, I guess an, uh, an old folks home for, um, for airplanes to the tulip fields in Holland. It's, yeah. it's quite a range. 
It's quite a range. Yeah. Good, good job. And it's one of those things you look at. You want to look at each page and go like, hmm, do I know what that is? You know, and like, you kind of figure it out. And like, uh, um, there is like some from my where I grew up, Miami, Florida, you know, like the coast of Florida. Um, that's just stunning looking, you know, from from space. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Jean. Good. Bart? Okay, so my last real pick is actually quite straightforward and simple. So I want to do something. I want to re, sort of re-emphasize one of my favorite picks I did last year because I didn't want to do it again as a pick because I did it last year. <laughs> but so last year I recommended the gridit system from Cocoon, which looked like this. Oh yeah. I so they're the basically grid. the little rubber bandy things. I picked it last year. It is this is out of my laptop bag. This is my real gridit in actual use. I use this thing every single day. It just slides into my laptop bag, so I have. All of my charge cables, so USB-C power, iPhone charger, uh, USB-C to USB cable, which is handy to have, headphones, oh yeah, little battery pack, because you got to have that, although mine was free, so you can't buy that, it's just <laughs> Windows 10, I visited Microsoft. So. Uh, all the adapters for, <laughs> I know it's terrible that I have a Windows 10, one of all people. All of the adapters for taking my laptop to a video display, my iPad to a video display, my old MacBook to a video display, headphones, power adapt, power brick, everything. It's all in here. It cannot come out, right? It, it's it's just amazing. So I, I still love the gridits that I loved last year, and I'll probably still love them next year, too. They're amazing. So they're from a company called Cocoon. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They're amazing. And colors, too. So, oh, they come in colors now. Cool. Oh, they come in colors. Yeah, I have one in black because when I bought this one a few years ago, they didn't come in colors. They were only in black. Do they do electric blue? Because I like electric blue, as you might have guessed. <laughs> anyway, so my real pick is a stocking stuffer to end on. So nice, simple, cheap. Uh, I think it's, was it $7 or something? Seven forty nine. So it is something called a charge-only USB cable. And the reason you will want this is, well, I, I have one problem to solve. I detest iTunes with a fiery passion. And when I shove my iPhone into my computer, iTunes <laughs> insists on annoying me. Well, a charge-only cable doesn't have data pins. So that means that iTunes is blissfully unaware of the fact that my iPhone needs some electricity. And so that, that is the only thing I bought it for, was to be able to charge my phone <laughs> from my iMac without iTunes starting. It does one thing, and it does it well. Okay, so charge only cable, you'll find them on Amazon. As a, I'll, I'll give Chuck a link for the show notes, but it's $7.49, and I love it to pieces. Okay. Um, I, I didn't realize that you had that, that kind of relationship with iTunes, Bart. Uh, okay, so my, my iMac can work as a 2009 iMac. Having iTunes start is an issue because I'm not known for closing apps. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the little icons are pretty small in the dock as it is, and there's a whole bunch of stuff doing actual work that matters. And then having iTunes with its memory-hugging ways coming in there and making my disk page away for two, you know, it's easily a minute of hard drive going crunch, 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 crunch. It just annoys me. So go I, iTunes be gone. USB charge only cable. <laughs> iTunes be gone should be the name of the cable. <laughs> should, should, shouldn't it? <laughs> go, Gene. Go get the domain right now. I know. <laughs> Somebody probably already has that. <laughs> Maybe so. Well, I guess it's interesting that you would pick that, Bart, because I'm going to pick a cable, too. Um, really? I'm going to pick the Red Tech Pro Cable. These are ruggedized lightning cables for your iPhone and iPad. Now, there are a lot of, a lot of people who have ruggedized these things, um, but Red Tech was one of the first ones I've seen. Um, I, they, they make just a great stuff, but the thing that kind of sells me on this one over and above everything else is that they give you a lifetime warranty. So you can't go wrong with this because if you would be successful in damaging or breaking this cable or the connectors, and that's not going to be any small feat either. Um, but if you do, you call them, send it back and you get a new one. Wow. Come, come in various uh, shape or various sizes. Um, they're just really, really nice. They're nice looking. Um, you know, they they, they um, are, core, are are wrapped so that they're tough to tangle. And and even <laughs> I cannot tangle these things. And believe me, I can tangle just about anything. 
So these these are just really nice lightning cables. Um, I talked to John Greskoviak at CES um, about these when they were just introducing them, and they tested them with truck drivers because and I can't quite still can't quite figure out how this happens, but truck drivers have a habit of cl of, of shutting doors on lightning cables on iPhone cables, oh. and you know constantly breaking the, the connectors and breaking the little ends off. I don't know about you two, but I know how many lightning cables I've gone through just by day-to-day -day use, pulling them in and out, in and out. Sooner or later, they fray or something yeah. disconnects, and they're no good yeah. anymore. No, Chuck, I know how I break them. How do you break the them? the wheels of my office chair. Oh, OK, oh. yeah. I will either run over the end and bend all the USB so it doesn't fit anymore. Or I'll run over the cable and it will start to fray and come apart, and then a month or two later it'll be broken. Well, but, yeah, my office chair destroys my lightning cables yep. regularly. Well, try these because I, I've I've been using one now or several now for quite some time um, as my regular daily driver cables, you know, plugging in and out, and they they look just like new. Um, now I have to admit I have not tried to run over them with an office chair. <laughs> But give it a go. Let me know how you get on. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to well, do it. It's, but it's lifetime guarantee. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah I it, mean, lifetime. And it, who's lifetime? My lifetime? Or? Yeah. Well, and again, if you know Rad Tech, you know <laughs> that they make you know really good yeah. stuff. So there are a lot of there are a lot of good name brands out there. There's some no name, no name brands out there that started doing this. Um, but I wanted something that I could count on. So Rad Tech yeah. Pro cables. Check them out. Oh, well, we'll totally uh, check check those out for App Camp actually because um, we, you know, kids. We've been using this with kids, yeah, kids, yeah. Kids. yeah. reasons, kids, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, and we, um, one thing I don't want to have is fraying cables around kids, like, and I don't want to repair them either. Um, we looked at like some of the solutions out there, and I'm like, I don't feel right. I want it to just be, you know totally brand new um I, because i i can't imagine that this is dangerous it's probably just won't work but it, it, it they aren't my kids and i don't want to yeah. take it I, I mean it's five yeah. volts so it, it's very very unlikely to do anyone any harm but at the same time do you really want to be ending you know struggling through your lessons because the cable is faulty i mean right. there's enough things that can go wrong in a classroom without stupid things like cables not working yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's and and of course, you know, even buying from Apple, if you, if you're buying genuine Apple cables, um, they're not cheap. And I'm becoming more and more paranoid over anything that I plug into my computers coming from no name brands or off brands because yes. there's there's so many there's so many bad things going on out there that not only it's not even not even a case of just compromising your data, it's potentially damaging your machines. So, yeah, and with you with USB C that counts double because USB C has way more voltage in it, and there were cables being sold on Amazon which actually reversed the data pins and the power pins on USB C, which meant that the full power for charging your laptop went into your laptop's motherboard. Yep. So basically, plug in cable by new MacBook. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and you won't get that with Rad Tech because I I have never bought something from that company that has not been superb. Exactly. Yeah. And and they stand behind yeah. it. Too. They know what they're doing. Yeah. So that's twelve plus picks. I'm not quite sure what the total number was, but there were <laughs> there were some there were some ancillary things in there, but uh, a bunch of good picks. Um, so we, we got to do this again next year. Is it a date? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Like, like, I, 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 people people get annoyed when I talk nerd stuff at them when they don't ask for it. You want us to talk nerd? This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. So, yeah. Gene, Gene, where can uh, folks find you when you're not here um, doing gift picks? Um, I am. You can find App Camp for Girls at appcampforgirls.com. Um, the four is the number four. Um, I'm Mac Genie, M A C G E N I E, on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm lately more Instagram oriented than Twitter. And. Um, yeah, that's that's where I am. So, great. Well, it's good to have you, and uh, we we'll, we will do it more often in 2017. Sounds great, Bart. Uh, I I know where to find you, but tell everybody else where they can find you and how they can follow <laughs> you. 
Well, you can find me, the person, at bartb.ie, where you'll find links to Twitter and all that kind of stuff, because no one can spell my surname. And my handle in most <laughs> places is bbushots. Terrible idea in hindsight, but look, I was young and naive. <laughs> uh, and then you can find my podcast at lets-talk.ie. And I know I hate URLs with dashes, but when you put let's talk together without a dash, it says let stalk. And that's not good. <laughs> it's lets-talk.ie whole different uh, podcast there bart precisely yeah. because i had someone complain but dash is a evil it's like yeah and what happens when they're not there oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about apple uh apple news podcast and also a photography podcast on yes. let's talk so check them both out yes please thanks so much again guys it's been a lot of fun we will do it again looking forward uh, to it yeah I'm looking at Bart's, of course, I go right to Bart's site because I'm like, I know how to spell your name. I know. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> trust, I would trust. have left out an, an S. There's many S's in his last name. Yeah. So. Trust, trust the man who knows his own last name. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices, Mac Jury on Mac Voices. Uh, we will continue with our gift picks going forward uh, with and, as well as a lot of other stuff. And we hope you'll join us. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by BackBeatMedia at BackBeatMedia.com. Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.